and welcome back to the channel. On this video, I want to talk about something that doesn't get really talked about a lot, enough, I don't think. And that is about purchasing a bike online. I'd say the majority of us, I don't know the percentage, but the majority of us do that, right? We, we uh, purchase our bike, uh, just like a lot of things we purchase online. So we don't actually get to physically see the bike. I want to go down here. And uh, so we rely on several things, right? And one of them is the specs on the bike. So first off, we hope that the specs are correct or pretty darn close to what they say they're going to be. And secondly, we rely on it. These are the two big things I think that we rely on. So we rely on that. And the other thing we rely on is other people's uh, opinions on the bike. So if you're like me, when I purchased all three of my bikes, I obviously did not uh, get a chance to see the bike in person. I did not uh, get to ride one or anything. I just relied on my own homework on looking up all the statistics on the bike, like what it has to offer on the website or I would watch videos. I watched videos for all three of the bikes that I have online. I would scrounge around looking for uh, videos and that's about all you have to go on. And so it, that makes it hard, you know, to try to use that to buy a bike. But that's all we kind of have to go on, right? So. So you're relying on, as far as the statistics or specs on the bike, you're relying on the company or whomever's talking about it to be fairly accurate, right? Um, you know, we want it, we want things to be right when we read them. We want it to be able to do what it says. And then the videos, we see people doing videos on the bike and they give their opinions. So they're their opinions and uh, that's what we have to go on. So it's hard though because I may get the same bike as you get and I may think totally differently of it. It may ride different to me like for example the Lyric Graffiti here is as smooth as can be. This is amazing this bike. Uh, how, how nice it is to ride. Just comfortable. You just feel like you're just sitting there in a, in a recliner you know, and away we go. But uh, other people may think differently. They may think, you know, you know that bike really lacks a, a rear suspension and I can't ride it, you know. It's, it's, I can ride it, I mean, but I, I find it awful bumpy or whatever. So, um, anyway, uh, so it makes it kind of hard to buy a bike though. I mean, we can't go into, unfortunately, a brick and mortar store and say, uh, okay, I want to try, I've narrowed my decision down to three bikes. I want to try that one, that one, and that one. Well, you obviously can't do that because stores don't stock every bike that is out there, you know, for example. And uh, we can't get into a store and just say, uh, okay, let me test drive these. So it makes it hard. The other thing is it can get frustrating when the shipping date, they tell you one thing and then you're waiting and waiting and waiting. You know, I think right now, is the time where everybody's itching to get their bikes. So in a way, I think, and I've said this in the past, that I think the best time to really buy a bike is probably the Black Friday uh, sales. I think the best deals come up on Black Friday and you're getting it at the end of the year, which is bad because you can't ride it. In a lot of places you can't ride in the winter, right? Or you don't ride in the winter. so. But the good thing is about this is that you have time to allow the shipping to take a little bit. You know, if it takes a bit of time, it takes a few months, so be it, because you're not gonna ride it anyway. 
So when spring comes around, you've got your bike and you're ready to go. And we're getting to that time of year when everybody will be polishing up their bikes and then we're going to get out there. So, but it is hard. Uh, I know when I bought the Rad Rover, I mean, I, I was looking more on that bike, the very first bike, for just something that was popular um, with people and uh, reliable, you know, and, and got good reviews, which that bike did. I, I didn't read, I didn't remember reading anything negative uh, toward the bike, really, you know, it, it was reliable, it came from a, um, uh, you know, a company that has been out there a while, and, uh, so that's why I went for that one. I didn't look for anything specifically. Um, you know, I didn't, I was just getting into the uh, e-bike world at that time. That was about four years ago, four and a half years ago. And uh, I mean, I've learned a lot now. So I know a lot more what to look for. And uh, uh, I know more what I want. So when I bought the Rad Rover, you know, I just commuted back and forth to work with it, and I would uh, ride it around a little bit, but I I knew its capabilities after having it were, I knew it, it could not do hills. You're not gonna get up these monster of hills that we have in our area. Uh, basically, they're like mountains. And, uh, so I knew to, to just stay away from those, right? And, and just let the bike, uh, uh, ride the bike where it's capable of uh, riding. And it's, it's a good, fun bike. I still have that bike today. But then I knew the next bike, I wanted something with a lot more uh, power, you know, that, to, that can get me up hills. And that's why I went for the uh, Aerial Rider Grizzly. I did my homework on that one though. I really scoured uh, videos um, as much as I could and looked around and uh, on websites and bikes and I kept coming back to that one and I had wanted it for a while but didn't purchase it right away okay when I started looking at them they had just come out with the uh, version 2 so version 1 uh, was uh, was out there and it was the one with two uh, dual motor but 750 watt I think the batteries were a little bit smaller and uh, so luckily for me when I was looking at getting the bike they had just come out with the uh, version 2 and so it was a thousand watt motors and a little bit bigger batteries so uh, I lucked out there I think there were 32 uh, volt uh, or 32 uh, amp combined before and then they upped the amps and it was a combined 35 amp so um, so and the bike what intrigued me about it is the dual motor the dual motor from what I uh, could gather on videos you know was was the way to go if you're wanting to climb hills and stuff this bike will take you you know it'll take you everywhere So um, I looked around at other bikes and all that, and I kept coming back to that one. But every time I would look at their site, of course the bike was out of stock. So once I saw the bike come back into stock in March of 2022, I went for it right away, and I got the bike within a few days, like basically within days four days or something like that on April Fool's Day so the bike is coming up to exactly one year old and uh, so but I really had to do my homework and the thing about bikes uh, online and looking on YouTube at bikes is a lot of people will do reviews on the bike but you don't see much else you don't see 
just general riding around. Not too much, you know, not as much. At least back then. I think it's getting a little better now for that. But, um, so that's why when I ride these bikes, I ride them a lot. I do a lot of videos. So you get a good chance to look over the bike really well and just general riding, you know, and stuff. And you can see what the bike can do. Uh, whereas when I would watch videos on the bike, uh, I, it, most of the videos would just be reviews, you know. There wouldn't be a lot of other videos. Sometimes I would get to see a comparison video. You know, they would compare the uh, graffiti to the uh, Monday motorcycle or uh, some of the juiced bikes and stuff like that. And so I would get to see what it does up against other bikes that are in the same class. But not a lot of just general riding around like I do. So hopefully this helps people in deciding on a bike if they'd like to ride it. Uh, or like to buy it, I should say. And then I went for this bike here and people might be wondering, well, why? Well, with that bike, the uh, aerial rider Grizzly does everything. You climb hills and, and, and whatnot. Why did you go for another bike? Well, the reason why I went for another bike is I wanted to have a second bike. I'm going to call it a second bike. It's actually a third bike, but one that's more similar to the to the uh, Grizzly. And this bike was intriguing to me from the very outset. When I first laid eyes on it, you know, I thought, "Wow, you know, look at that bike. It's a it's a 2500 watt uh, and it's gearless you know it has some differences and I just wanted a second bike to kind of trade off and the other thing is if that bike ever broke down on me and I had to have it repaired on that well I have another bike in the meantime that I can ride that's kind of similar so that's why I bought uh, the third bike but but buying a, a bike online, especially your first bike, can be overwhelming, for sure. But, I mean, just do your homework. Um, first thing you got to do is set a budget. How much you're willing to spend. That's kind of what I did. And then I, I looked at all the bikes that are in that price range, and then I narrow it down from there. Um, I didn't have a lot of choices when it was the Rad Rover when I bought that one. It seemed like there wasn't a lot of bikes out there. If they were, they were kind of hidden. You know, like I couldn't find them. Whereas now, um, I'm probably looking harder for one thing, but I, uh, I uh, can dig up a lot more bikes and I'm always looking around and, um, or I'll get emails on bikes and stuff like that. So you get, you know, you're more in tune with what's out there. So, um, so I become, you know, I become pretty passionate about the e-bikes and stuff. And so it's got me into it more and more. And I'm you know, right into it now. So I'm, it's, it's a lot of fun to, uh, to check out other bikes. But uh, yeah, I would set a budget if you're buying one. Especially the first bike, as my mouth gets uh, cold where I can't talk, and uh, and uh, and go from there, and then and then look at several bikes that are in that same price range. The style of bike you want is important too. Like you want, whether you want a beach cruiser or you want the moped style like this, and then just uh, narrow it down, and then uh, check out some videos if you can find some on the bikes, and then just. Uh, you know, um, take, pick the bike you want and, and go for it. You know, unfortunately, we can't just go into a store and try every bike. I wish we could, but we can't. So we got to do, you know, do with what we have out there and uh, make do with it. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, 
Uh, if you want to make a comment on this video or any others, go ahead and leave a comment in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you would like to subscribe to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified as to when the next video comes up on the channel, just hit that notification bell and you'll be notified. And if you'd like to purchase this very bike right here, the Lyric Graffiti, I do have a link in the descriptions and I have a discount code, Oregon E-Biker Mark, all one word, that's Oregon E-Biker Mark. That will save you $150 off the bike. And once again, thank you for joining me on this video. And until next time. Take care.